Alright guys, so here we have two forces acting on a part. We have a 450 newton force going 60 degrees above the x-direction, and we have a 700 newton force going 15 degrees below the x-direction, or the negative x-direction. So what we have to do is we have to find the magnitude of the resultant force. So we know that we're going to have to break these two forces into different components, both the x and the y, and then we're going to have to add them up at the end of the day. From the parallel axis theorem, we know that these forces are going to yield a net force or a resultant force somewhere in this direction, but we're not asked to find the direction here, we're just asked to find the magnitude. So first things first, we're going to define a coordinate system. So we'll start off with the x direction. We're going to call the positive x direction to the right, and we'll call the positive y direction in the upwards direction. So in other words, all that this means is that any force that points to the right is positive in the x direction, any force that points to the left is negative x, any force that points up is positive y, any force that points down is negative y. So for example, this force is going to have positive x and positive y, this force is going to have negative x and negative y. So let's go ahead and start breaking these forces down into components. We'll start off with that 450 newton force. So we have 450 newtons. And we'll add these vectors tail to tip. And we have 60 degrees of direction above the x there. So right over here, we're going to have the x, and here we're going to have the y. We notice that we have a right triangle here, so we can really just use the SOHCAHTOA properties. And we'll find that this x direction is really equal to 450 newtons, which is this uh, hypotenuse, times the cosine of 60 degrees. And then the y direction, we're going to have 450 newtons times the sine of 60 degrees. When you simplify these expressions, we have that uh, the x direction yields a 225 newton force, and the y direction yields a 389.7 newton force. And we know that these numbers are both positive because the X direction is to the right and the Y direction is upwards. Let me go ahead and add those vectors onto our triangle as I should have from the start. So that's the first force. We have it broken down into X and Y's. Now you just repeat this process on the other force. So we have that 700 Newton force going downwards. That is 700. And then you're just going to close it off and add those vectors tail to tip. So go ahead and do that. Do that. Always got to point at the resultant force, which is the hypotenuse. And once again, we have the x and the y. And we have the x is equal to, we're going to need the angle here, which is given as 15 degrees. Can't forget that. We have the x is equal to 700 times cosine of 15 degrees. And we have y is equal to 700 times sine of 15 degrees. Simple enough. Before we simplify these expressions, we know that the 700 Newton force is going to be mostly a horizontal force because it's closer to the x-axis than it is to the y-axis. So we know that to make sure that our work's correct, the x should be greater than the y in magnitude. So let's go ahead and simplify. So 700 cosine 15 degrees is equal to 676.1 Newtons, which is almost the entire force. That's pretty massive, actually. And then in the y direction, we have 181.2 newtons, which is, which actually sounds correct because we have a greater x than a y. Now we're almost done with the problem. We have the x and the y components. All that we have to do is add them up. And luckily, because they're broken down in components, we can finally do that. So we'll go ahead and do the sum of the forces in the x and the sum of the forces in the y. So we'll do the sum of the forces in the x first. And we'll do a 225 newton force going to the right. Subtract from it 676.1 newtons. And the reason is that the 676 newton force does go to the left, so according to our sign convention, we do have to, have to subtract in order to get the correct answer. So when we do that, we'll get a net of negative 451.1 newtons, and that's going to be the x direction. We'll do the sum of the forces in the y direction. And we'll find that 389.7 
newtons are going upwards and 181.2 once again going downwards so negative 181.2 and we'll find the net is 208.5 newtons now we're almost done here we're asked to find the resultant force which is going to be the magnet or the net force created by both of these two forces these are just the components of the resultant force so all you have to do is the Pythagorean theorem to find that we know that we have 451.1 going to the left. And then we have 208.5 upwards. We can close this thing off. And once again, you want to point in the direction that these forces are pointing in. So to the left and upwards, it will look like this. And that's going to be our resultant force, and that's what we are looking for. So from simply using the Pythagorean theorem, we know that the resultant force is equal to the square root of the other pieces here. So we'll have the square root of 451.1 squared plus the square root of 208.5 squared when you solve this expression, you'll find that FR is equal to 496.7 newtons. And that is the correct magnitude, which is what we were asked to find in this problem. So there is your final answer.